50,000 people will die this winter in the UK because they're not able to heat their home. We measure this as an official government statistic called the excess winter mortality rate. 11% of households in England and Wales are fuel poor. They can't afford to warm their homes. That's the equivalent of the entire population of London. The cost to the NHS from associated problems such as respiratory and cardiovascular issues is over 1.3 billion pounds. That's 1% of the NHS budget. That cost doesn't take into account the reduced quality of life of people and communities living in cold, damp and rotting homes. Heat is the single biggest factor in UK domestic energy consumption. It contributes one third of our greenhouse gas emissions. It's the single biggest thing causing air pollution and climate gases. The way we heat our homes is at the very heart of the climate crisis. And this has got to change. The technologies exist right now to solve this problem. And those technologies pay for themselves. In fact, they do more than that. They save money compared to the technologies that we currently use. I've had the great fortune to stand on the doorstep of an old lady who, for the first time in her life, feels warm in her home and able to afford her heating bills. And having installed thousands of such systems, there was nothing more moving than spending time with the Housing Association manager, whose job included reporting his organisation's early winter death statistics. He had to write down the names of the people that were lost. However, the whole ecosystem, infrastructure and economy of how we heat our homes has us locked in. Unlike adopting the latest electric vehicle where you could go to your local Tesla or Nissan Leaf dealer and drive away in an emission-free car you can't simply go to the store and walk away with the heating equipment equivalent. Well, you could just about, but connecting it to your house and making it work with your existing heating system is not straightforward. And your local plumber currently doesn't have the skills or the experience to make that work. The distribution system, your radiators, might need to be changed and the gas pipe, the oil tank, would need to be disconnected. Now, this is all possible, but let's face it. You don't think about changing your boiler until it breaks down. And at that point, it's too late to have a major systems change. And you're probably cold and you want a hot shower. <clears throat> we need a radical and disruptive solution. This will solve the climate change problem eliminate early winter deaths and cure fuel poverty. We need to do to heating, to boilers, heaters, furnaces and air conditioning, what Uber have done to taxis and what Netflix have done to TV. Digital technology now lets us use monitoring and control devices that are far better than a dial thermostat in the hallway or on the stairs. Artificial intelligent assistance enables you to be warm in your home when you want, while saving fuel, saving carbon, and saving money. And finance, just like a mortgage or the way you buy your mobile phone package, enables you to have these technologies without the high upfront price tag. Welcome to heat as a service. 
you will no longer heat your home with a fossil fuel burning device. And in a few years' time, you will be able to download an app which will enable your energy provider to manage the heating provision in the home. Moving the responsibility for heating efficiency and carbon emissions from you to them. And it's this point that is key. The responsibility for carbon emissions needs to be delegated from you to your service provider. The energy saving device that makes this all possible is called a heat pump. A heat pump will move three to four units of heat into a building for every, every unit of energy that drives it. Whereas a fossil fuel burning device such as a boiler will only ever give you a fraction of the energy that goes into it in fuel. Last year in Germany, more heat pumps were installed than gas boilers. Let me take a show of hands. Who here has got a heat pump in their home? Not many. I can see three hands. Well, it was actually a trick question. You all have. It's the fridge. And it turns out that it's sensible to warm your home using the same technology. And heat pumps have been mainstream heating devices in some countries for many decades. In the same way that a fridge moves heat from the space inside of it to the back of the, the kitchen cabinets, a heat pump heating system moves heat from the surrounding environment into the building. It's far more energy efficient to move heat from one space to another than to create heat by burning fuel. It's encouraging to know that a solution to our climate change problem and our obscene fuel poverty societal issue comes in the form of an engineering solution and some financing. We can solve climate change, eliminate fuel poverty and cure early winter deaths by harnessing capitalism to change our habits and by employing engineering innovation to evolve the solution. We can live in warm homes in a cold climate without doing damage to the planet. We just need to act to change. So what do I want you to take away from this talk? We need to stop burning fossil fuels. And we're already well on the way to moving to a, a society of electricity generation without burning coal. That, and planting trees, will enable us to reverse the damage that we've done to the planet. I want you to get excited about living in a zero carbon emission home. Insulate your home and make it energy efficient. If you live in the 15% of homes that aren't connected to the gas grid, use a reputable installer and install a heat pump now. You'll have a better heating system and it will save you money. If your house is connected to the gas main, then over the next few years, wait for your energy provider to provide a heat as a service option. Industry, manufacturers and energy suppliers tell me that consumers aren't ready. And yet government tell me that it's for industry to make this happen. So it's for us as consumers to tell the government to act on climate change. For industry to provide products and services that are consumer ready, and for industry to provide a heat as a service solution, with government providing a policy environment to accelerate that change. In a few years' time, the government will move to a policy of no new fossil fuel burning devices. But they're under a lot of pressure from the vested interests of energy providers selling fossil fuel and energy and the manufacturers with large supply chains providing fossil fuel burning devices. 
But I'll go back to my first point. And aside from the moral imperative of eliminating early winter deaths, the savings available to the NHS could pay for this transition. Solving climate change is a big goal. But surely, in the meantime, eliminating early winter deaths is motivation enough.